Hey everyone, Josh here. So today I have a pretty neat video for you. Uh, this paper presentation is going to be on um, something that I have to do a seminar on this Friday. And so I figured I'd share it with you because it's pretty cool and I think it's pretty interesting. So my name is Joshua Anderson, if you don't know. And today's pr paper presentation is going to be on the six differences in habitat use by African elephants, Loxodonta africana, and the Okavango Delta region in Botswana. And is size really the deciding factor? This paper was done by Kate Evans and Stephen Harris, and it was published in 2012 in the African Journal of Ecology. So a quick introduction to African elephants. So African elephants are considered megafauna animals. And megafauna means that uh, they are large animals of a particular region, uh, habitat, or geological period. So think of your Siberian tiger, think of your panda bear, and also think about this guy. No, I'm kidding. We're not talking about him. We're talking about these, the African elephants. There are approximately 415,000 of these animals in the wild. And then also within this paper study, I wanted to kind of give you a brief introduction to what they're going to be using as a method of recording data. So here we have an African elephant. It's a male bull. And if you look here, the shoulder height of a grown male is around 11 feet. So this is like a European, I'm assuming. So you, we all know Europeans are pretty short. So if you stack him, if you stack him on top of himself, he would probably be about the shoulder height of that African elephant. Also, the length of these elephants can be between 19 to 24 feet, depending on the sex. Males are larger than females, uh, so just keep that in mind. Also, um, elephants can weigh quite a bit, and even up to six tons. So like I said, elephants do weigh a lot. Uh, for instance, here they can weigh more than two uh, full-size trucks. So very heavy uh, um, animals. So introduction to the Okavango Delta. There are going to be three zones. The first zone is going to be the Panhandle. And the Panhandle is the beginning of the Delta where most of the water flows. So you have water here coming down from the mountains. And then, it, then you see it percolating down. Next is the permanent swamps. And this forms the core of the Delta with the three main channels that distribute the water, and I have these highlighted here in orange arrows. And then we have seasonal swamps, and these seasonal swamps cover the remaining southern and eastern and western areas. And take these triangles with a grain of salt, basically wherever you see a nice tan place, um, just know that this is during the rainy season um, and the flood season, these areas are, um, they have a lot of vegetation, they have a lot of biodiversity when it comes to plant life and animal life. So just know this area is very um, biodiversity rich during the seasons. And within each of these zones, you have various habitats within them, and which we will discuss in just a moment. So introduction, some more introduction, but this is going to be for the paper. Male elephants grow more rapidly than females and at a full adulthood are larger than females. So a quick photo here, you have an African male right here, and then you, on the left side you have an African female, or an African elephant female. If you look, the African male's head is larger and the female's is smaller. And then males are also superior competitors to females, forcing the other to use suboptimal habitats. So if you look here, this is a male elephant reaching up into the trees and getting that, that foliage from that tree, which is going to be a higher resource, uh, resource nutrient rich, um, like, sorry, resource. And, um, so, and then you also have a female right here, uh, using those sub suboptimal habitats, um, primarily grazing, and this is going to be less resource rich. But the, the key here that kind of uh, goes for the forest selection hypothesis is that the males are taller and they're larger. So they have more of, of a ability to reach resources that females cannot. And then habitat selection may be influenced by changing social groups through the animal's development. So a juvenile, for example, a juvenile male elephant's habitat choices will match those of the matriarch, and the matriarch is here normally in the front, and that is the oldest living female. Uh, but that ju juvenile may change once it leaves its natal herd and joins the bull society. So habitat selection may not be the animal's individual's uh, individual energetic requirements. So there are four hypotheses um, in this paper. 
I'm gonna try to run through them as quick as I can. You can skip forward if you like. Hypothesis number one, elephants in the Okavango Delta were selective in their choice of habitat. The null here is elephants in the Okavango Delta had no preference of habitat choice. And the alternative hypothesis here is that elephants will select for the most abundant of resource sites negating that habitat type. Hypothesis number two, elephants will show sexual dimorphism in the diversity of habitat use and selection. Null is going to be male and female elephants will show no differences in the diversity of habitat use and selection. And finally, um, male habitat preference will be based upon female habitat preferences, but this probably uh, will not be the case, as you will see later in the paper or in the presentation. Number three, size dimorphism in males will affect habitat selection. The null here is going to be size dimorphism in males will not affect the habitat selection. And the alternative hypothesis is going to be older males will determine diversity and evenness of habitat use more than the younger males. Number four, habitat selection in male elephants may be more dependent on social groupings than individual size and energetic requirements. The null here would be habitat selection in elephants will not be dependent on social groupings and more reliant on individual size and those energetic requirements. And lastly, I know this is a lot, bear with me. Habitat selection in the male elephants will be more socially dependent during the juvenile stage uh, than, other, uh, than other male life stages. Okay, we got that out of the way. Methods. So the research sites includes seasonal swamps with large areas of grasslands that pe flood periodically. If you look right here, this is going to be a snapshot, a uh, Google map, uh, as you would say, of the region that the research project was done within. The next photo is a zoomed in photo of that zoomed in photo. <laughs> if you look here, this would be considered um, a certain habitat type, which would be your grass, land, and floodplain. If you look right here, that would be considered your island vegetation. And if you look down here, you'll have more of your of your woodland uh, areas. But this doesn't, this photo here doesn't give it justice, but I'll discuss that in just a moment. And then each habitat type was estimated from the distance that each habitat type could be seen from both sides of a vehicle every 400 meters. So what these individuals would do is that they would drive around in these safari cars or safari trucks, what have you, and they will look out the left side and the right side of their car. And, and what they would do is they would measure vegetation type, tree type, and um, how thick the brush is, for example. What they'll do is they'll just kind of do a quick comparison of each habitat type of um, for every 400 meters to their left and to their right and call that habitat X drive down the road a little ways, probably about 500 meters, do the same thing. If they find different habitats, they will call that habitat Y. So there are five habitat types that were observed in this research project. The grassland and floodplain, which made up 51%. And if you look here, I have a quick photo kind of describing of what that looks like. So floodplain is gonna be very open areas, and then you'll have little to no vegetation um, when it comes to trees, but you'll have a lot of grassland and uh, a lot of low low shrubbery Next is going to be your terminalia woodland and this is going to be uh, This type of tree species and this makes up 22% of the habitat range within the research project Next is the other woodland which makes up 19% and this is made up of a bunch of different tree species uh, This is the photo of the iconic Lion King tree, I guess and uh, trees that make up this group are the Acaceae and the Combaritum species. And uh, yeah. Next is going to be the island vegetation, which made up 7% of this uh, research site or the research uh, project site. And these uh, island vegetations are very important, like I say, because they only make up 7%. And I'll tell you why they're very important later. And then lastly, the Mopane woodlands make up 1%, which is very, very low um, for this habitat area. Some more methods and data collection. So data collection during daylight hours from February 2002 to 2015 of February. Elephants that were sighted while driving were recorded, so their size and group compositions. So think of someone, uh, they're in their car, they're driving down the road, and they see uh, three or more elephants. They group those elephants as an aggregation, put those, like I said, into a group. They'll drive, for example, 499 meters down the road. And if they see three or more elephants, they'll consider them as all of one group, comprising of six individuals, for example. 
And during this research uh, project, there were only five set routes totaling 145 kilometers or about 90 miles. And to kind of give you an example, that is going to be like driving from Auburn to Troy, Alabama. And these gray lines kind of give you an idea of what a track would look like, or kind of like what they would drive. Um, but I'm pretty sure it would be more of a fan method where they would kind of branch out and they probably wouldn't drive just in one uh, cardinal direction. And all in all, this entire project, 18,000 kilometers were covered. Now, this 18,000 kilometers uh, was kind of broken up into two, th uh, two categories, set routes and pseudo-randomized routes. And those set routes were, um, so basically they would wake up in the morning, they would say, okay, we're going to take this particular route this day, and they would take it. But the pseudo-random routes were done because there were safari groups within this region, and they had to avoid those routes because animals would be skittish because, uh, you know, safari groups are loud and whatnot. So there was, I believe, 57% of all of these uh, 18,000 kilometers was a set route, and then 43% was the pseudo-randomized routes. So methods and data collection, there were four male age groups, 10 to 20 years, 21 to 25 years, 26 to 35 years, and then equal to or greater than 36 years. And when they were making these group compositions, they were recording the habitats that these males were found with them. And the way they um, figured out that these were males is that they looked at the shoulder height, the tusk length, the tusk girth, and also the head shape. Um, but it's really hard to ID African elephants, whether it's a male or female, because they both have tusks, and whereas their Asian counterpart may or may not have tusks when it comes to the male and or female. Uh, so you kind of have to kind of look at the undercarriage, if you know what I'm talking about, to kind of really get the sex of the organism itself. But normally it is, it's fairly easy, but if you do it for three years, like, like, they, like they did. So results, both males and females exhibited habitat preferences across all of the seasons. And then if you look right here, seasonal proportions of habitat use is going to be these gray boxes. Okay, like I said a while ago, the grassland and floodplain had a 51% habitat uh, use within this research project. So 51%, there's a 50%. So the dark bar kind of represents those habitat um, areas, the proportions of habitat areas. And these gray bars kind of tell you the habitat uses of these animals. And this top one here is going to be your males, and this bottom graph is going to be your females. So males were more selective than females, um, and habitat use was highly sexually segregated in the flood seasons and less so in the dry seasons. So females did not have a preference in the flood season for their habitat type, or as males did, they did not prefer grassland, grassland floodplains, and they preferred island vegetation and Mopane woodlands. So like I said, this is a 1% uh, proportion of the habitat of this entire study, and you can see that the elephants were fairly uh, fairly aggregated in this habitat type, so like I said, they preferred in these areas, or at least the males did. And then also, age did not affect the pattern of habitat use by male elephants, with all age groups avoiding grassland and floodplain areas, and then preferring this island vegetation and Mopane woodlands. If you look here, uh, most of the graphs are pretty much the same. If you uh, look here, the juveniles, or um, I, we, I guess you can call them teenagers, the teenagers did have a small preference for grassland and floodplain, and less so for island and um, Mopane woodlands. So touching or revisiting the hypotheses and predictions, uh, hypothesis number one, elephants in the Akavanga Delta were selective in their habitat choice, so males were more selective than females. And then elephants will show sexual dimorphism in the diversity of habitat use and, and selection. For hypothesis number two, that one was true. Number three, the null hypothesis was true. Size dimorphism by males would not affect habitat selection. So going back to the, that age group graph of the males, you saw that, that all male groups preferred that island and mopane um, habitats, whereas they did not prefer the grassland. Uh, so there was no, um, there was no size dimorphism 
there when it because a certain age of an elephant dictates its size so there was no um, habitat selection when it came to that and then the alternative hypothesis habitat selection in males male elephants will be more socially dependent during the juvenile stage because these juveniles are with the herd they are with the matriarch or or in pretty much an all female herd and uh, they would kind of hang out there and then once they left and joined bull society or became in individualistic and they kind of looked at their more their more um, individual needs um, and then like i said uh, then other male life stages discussion male elephants were more habitat selective than females within the delta and then during the flood and rainy seasons males did not select for or against habitats whereas the males did and males older than 21 years of age selected for island vegetation year-round due to their ability to reach fruiting hyphiani trees and cross the deep marshes so the size of the male elephants older in age had the ability to get to these island vegetations or these island vegetation habitats because they were able to cross these uh, marshes during the flood season and they were able to get the fruit from these trees and that would be a supplemental um, nutrients for these elephants whereas the females had really they had a hard time crossing these deep marshes and then also the male elephants uh, the older they were and the larger their size they had the ability to knock these trees over and get the fruit and females they were not very successful in knocking these trees over and getting those fruits during the dry season male elephants expand their browsing range and tend to be habitat numb meaning they will go wherever resources are available so these these male elephants, they honestly did not care. They did not have a preference. They pretty much just went where there was food and high rich food or, or high rich nutrients. And lastly, habitat selection in elephants may be more dependent on social groups and hence the decision of others than, than on individual size and energetic requirements. This is my picture references, literature references, and then this will be my class discussion page. Uh, so we would just talk about female data was skewed, was skewed in this uh, project because females were very skittish, specifically on the safari tours. And could this in substantially impact the study? And then also I have here the limited route numbers and observations from the truck. It could also, it can make IDing of the, of the males and females somewhat difficult. And then also in the figure two in the paper, uh, it is not it is not clear if they counted non juvenile males within the study, so. And that's it. Thank you for watching, and I uh, hope you guys have a good one.